Welcome to the video lesson on human impact in the biosphere. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the negative effect of human activity through agriculture, acquiring resources, ozone depletion, acid rain, climate change, pollution, and loss of biodiversity and extinction. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to take a first look at the negative effect of human activity through agriculture. When doing agriculture, the first thing to take in consideration is that we had to do some deforestation. This includes what is called the slash and burn method. Just cut the trees down, burn them up, and then prepare the land to be able to grow uh, crops. Another thing to consider is what is called monoculture. Monoculture is growing only one type of crop in an area, not only one species, but one variety of the same species. This can damage the ecosystem, uh, and the most common example locally is corn. When a farmer grows corn in a field over and over and over and over again, year after year after year, and not only is just growing corn, but a variety of corn, um, is especially damaging to the ecosystem. This is because using only one variety of one plant increases susceptibility to diseases. Also through agriculture, we have what's going on called soil depletion. Soil depletion is the use of chemical fertilizers and the same crops uh, fertilizing the same crops over and over uses up the same nutrients from the soil, requiring chemical fertilizers to return the nutrients. These are often granular in nature. The overuse of chemical fertilizers can be bad for animals. The runoff containing the chemicals from fertilizers can get into well water and streams, thus traveling to larger bodies of water and watersheds. This is especially true if soon after applying the chemical fertilizer, we get a hard rain, and then that rainwater washes the chemicals into our streams, and through our streams it eventually flows into our lakes. The chemical fertilizers can lead to what is called eutrophication. Eutrophication is the process by which you get excess nutrients built up in a water a body of water, this causes an abundance of plant growth, and the plant growth chokes out and kills animals. So the runoff stimulates algae growth, the algae die, and O2 concentrations drop. And when O2 concentrations drop, this creates a dead zone where fish and other organisms cannot live. Now we'll take a look at um, the negative impact of human activity on acquiring resources. Typically, to acquire a resource, we have to do things like mining for metals, logging of trees for paper, and drill for oil to get um, plastics and, of course, fossil fuels. Mining practices from the 1800s were very messy and no longer used, but negative effects are still causing problems. Cyanide in streams, we have methane pockets beneath the surface of the earth, etc. Human activity also negative has a negative impact due to this ozone depletion. Ozone is a naturally occurring layer of the atmosphere that protects us from damaging ultraviolet rays of the sun. So ozone is a good thing. The symbol for ozone is O3. Normal, o, normal oxygen is O2. So when three oxygen molecules bond together, you get what is called ozone. CFCs and aerosols and coolants destroy ozone, which leads to an increase in UV light and results in skin damage. This is why there is such a huge emphasis on properly recycling and destroying 
things like air conditioners, etc., and why the uh, garbage industry is so strict with regulations with regards to that. Air conditioners, refrigerators, freezers, etc. Next, let's take a look at the impact of human activity due to acid rain. Acid rain is caused by burning coal or other fossil fuels, which produces nitric acid and sulfuric acid. So nitrogen compounds and, sulf and sulfur compounds go into our atmosphere, combine with water vapor, and produce nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Acids enter the atmosphere and return to the earth with rainfall, killing plant life and causing the pH of water to drop dramatically. You, rem you might remember from our first unit that pH is a measure of how acidic or basic a substance is and acids are, are on the low side of the pH scale. We have seen results due to acid rain as close as in our backyard up in the Adirondacks. Scrubbers and coal burning plants remove the acid, which is now mandatory for all coal burning furnaces, just like the one on the other side of the lake, which is AES Cuga. They're shutting that one down soon because AES Cuga is not able to keep up with the mandates um, that go along with producing cleaner air. All right, let's take a look at the negative impact of human activity with regard to climate change. Climate change is an increasing temperature resulting in melting glaciers, ice caps, and larger storms. Some scientists believe the increasing global temperature is just a result of being at the tail end of the last ice age. In other words, we are still coming out of the last ice age and therefore we are warming up naturally. Other scientists believe that the increased global temperature is a result of human behavior by burning of fossil fuels, increasing carbon dioxide, and that heat is trapped because of that increase in carbon dioxide, which creates a greenhouse effect. Next, let's take a look at the impact of negative, a negative impact of human behavior with regards to pollution. We'll start with non-biodegradable toxins. Some pesticides, an example of which are some pesticides such as DDT. And we have a nice example below in the diagram. DDT is a chemical that was used to um, spray for mosquitoes. The problem was that the DDT traveled through the food chain and mosquitoes typically draw, um, live in swampy areas so when you spray for DDT you're spraying it on uh, shallow bodies of water like swamps and things like that. Well the algae picks up the DDT, insects eat the algae, fish such as minnows eat the insects, Larger fish eat the minnows, and then eagles eat the larger fish. What was happening was that the DDT cost, caused the eagles to lay eggs that had soft shells, so their young were not able to reproduce. This caused a huge decline in the bald eagle population to the point where bald eagles um, became endangered. This, of course, became a success story because we brought the bald eagles back. And you are very commonly able to see them, uh, especially at the north end of Cuba Lake up in the Montezuma Refuge area. But they are also seen, not uncommon, in other parts of the lake, uh, both Cuga and Seneca Lake. So the bald eagle population decline, research found it was due to high concentration of DDT in baby eagles. Another non-biodegradable toxin are heavy metals such as lead and mercury. 
These are complex organic compounds used for solvents, gasoline, turpentine, etc. And they cause huge havoc in our bodies of water um, lakes. Lake Onondaga Lake up near Syracuse is an excellent example of the problems caused by solvents used in industry being dumped into the lake. Air pollution, of course, is another type of pollution of great concern. Carbon monoxide, ozone, particulates, including smoke, volatiles, which are evaporates that can be smelled, and carbon dioxide. Some believe it's bad, others believe that it's not. We're going to wrap up our impact of human behavior and we'll take a look at the negative impact of human behavior um, with loss of biodiversity and extinction. Some species go extinct due to human behavior while others die out naturally. There are various ethical arguments for and against protecting endangered species. That'll do it for our brief introduction on human impact in the biosphere. Much more to come on this as we discuss this more in class through doing questions and problems and look at human populations and how they impact our environment.